We're standing inside the uh, circular building by Arup. This started a number of months ago when we started exploring the idea of the circular economy and asking the question, what would it mean to build a building in a circular economy? And for us, it's about starting to ask questions, both of ourselves as designers and of the industry, about how would you apply circular economy principles to a construction industry? I think we're continuing to, to live in a world where we don't make uh, the best use of the resources that are available to us. Um, we still have far too many negative impacts on the environment when it comes to the construction sector and other associated industries. So we need to start to rethink how our industry works and how we can become sustainable in a much more holistic and integrated way. At the moment we work in an industry where we design an object almost like a one-off and then engage the suppliers and then build it as one element. Whereas from day one we need to think about how will we deconstruct it, how will we layer things up so they can easily be demountable, um, and how can we inherently design an end of life and flexibility and adaptability so it can be applied to the circular economy. So we started by, by looking at this house as a series of components that actually could be clamped together and then disassembled quite easily. So then we can send them back to the manufacturers and put them back into the manufacturing stream. So starting with the, the steel frame, um, that's from offcuts from another side. It's, it's bolted together and so we can easily re-bolt it apart. It's also a rigid steel frame so we can actually uh, provide uh, adaptability and flexibility with inside the form and that's another element to the circo economy. On the steel frame we put these prefabricated panels. What's unique about these panels is actually they're made from uh, agricultural byproduct. It's a, after you do cropping on site, it's all the waste that's left behind. So basically it's a wheat waste that's then compressed together with, uh, in a non-toxic way. Um, and then these boards were uh, computer controlled cut, put together, put together on a truck and brought to site. The challenge to us and the challenge to the industry is, is to create materials that are non-toxic, that produce uh, non-hazardous uh, chemicals so when they can be remanufactured at the end of their life it's, it's a lot easier and we don't have any chemical uh, byproducts as well and so uh, our aim was and question to the, to the supply the industry and the suppliers was to try and source materials that could either be upcycled from other pro projects in another non-toxic way or re can be recycled back into the manufacturing stream in a non-toxic way. The blue walls are made out of Ortex. They're made out of 80% PET bottles, so they're upcycled and they're actually just pinned together, so they're prefabricated, easy to take apart. We can actually change them over the lifespan of a building, and also we can send them back to the manufacturer and get them remanufactured into new boards as well. This prototype has been uh, engineered in order to reduce the amount of energy used uh, following the passive house concept. Um, one side is the actual envelope design, uh, which is, it was engineered in order to have high performances and reduce the actual amount of energy spent in uh, heating up the building. And the other, uh, the other, on the other hand, we have a series of sensors that they can read the temperature and the various parameters that influence the environment in a house. For this prototype, we have designed a ventilation system um, which, uh, which allows to exchange uh, external fresh air into the house to provide adequate uh, indoor air quality. Um, we have used 3D printing and laser cut as technologies to um, develop this unit. All the internal components, they are 3D printed with 90% uh, recycled PET, which comes from old bottles. We only have uh, DC power, direct current power. Originally we designed the building to have as little energy as possible. So all the um, uh, systems which use energy, uh, for instance lighting or uh, um, electronics, uh, uh, there are, so that we have the tablets, we have the TVs, uh, they're all uh, um, designed so that they can take uh, either 5 volts, 12 volts, 24 volts, uh, 19 volts for the TV and uh, uh, 48 volts uh, for uh, um, some of the lighting as well. The um, the DC uh, network that we have, uh, though, is, uh, um, is uh, mainly electronics, uh, and so it made sense uh, to power it straight from, uh, from the battery system. Uh, the battery system that uh, we've selected is a battery system that uh, uses a salt water uh, solution. 
uh, is uh, from a company called Aquion and uh, um, it's uh, um, yeah, we, we selected it because uh, the, uh, it is non-toxic uh, and it's also certified 100% uh, cradle to cradle, which means all the parts uh, that make up the battery uh, are uh, um, coming from a um, source which then can be, um, you know, can be reused to make something new.